Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Very happy to be here. I would like to talk um, about an issue that is also related to the GDPR, but that has not attracted um, as much attention as it uh, deserves, at least according um, to me, to us. Um, who are working on a project um, uh, on this issue, and that is the impact of the GDPR on children. Not only young children, but also um, adolescents. So I think we can all agree, we all know that um, from birth, or in some cases even before birth, um, uh, enormous amounts of data are collected from children. These uh, data are collected by uh, public bodies, by governments, by schools, for instance, education departments, of course, by uh, private companies. We heard a lot about that uh, this morning. Um, and in some cases also, um, parents play a role in disclosing information about uh, their children in the digital um, environment. So enormous amounts of data, so I think we can all uh, very much agree that um, children are data subjects. And I think a second thing that we can agree on is that uh, children have a right to protection. This is um, laid down in many international instruments. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child has a specific right to privacy. And of course, for instance, in the EU, we have the Charter on Fundamental Rights of the European Union, where we not only have Article 7 and 8 on privacy and data protection, but also Article 24 on the rights of children and the fact that their best interests must be taken into account in all matters that um, affect them. Um, I think um, the GDPR does a very good job in acknowledging that children have a right to protection. In the Data Protection Directive, there was no mention of uh, children at all. In the uh, data protection regulation, there is mention of children at uh, several points, both in the recitals and in um, the articles. Um, there are a few um, articles there on the screen which may have an impact on children and adolescents. Uh, maybe not directly, maybe not, uh, they are not mentioned in um, those specific articles. For instance, we already heard about um, data protection by design or by default. Um, children are not mentioned explicitly th in that, but perhaps this article in its implementation can mean something um, for children. We also have an article that says that uh, any information um, on uh, the processing of data of children needs to be made clear to them in language that um, is understandable for them, so language that is uh, child-friendly. Uh, child um, so there are some opportunities within the GDPR to um, provide for a better protection of children when their personal data are being processed. But in this discussion, there is a risk that um, the right to protection might uh, endanger other rights of children. So for instance, their rights to participation. The UNCRC, so the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child, states very clearly that children not only have a right to protection, but also to participation. So that means, for instance, participating in online social network services in the digital environment um, to uh, an important extent. Um, one article of the GDPR um, is particularly relevant um, in this context, and that is Article 8. Article 8 uh, states that if, um, if you're a provider of information society services and you want to use consent as a basis to process personal data of children, you need to obtain parental consent if the data is um, of a child um, under 16 years of age. I suppose that you all know that um, the COPPA um, uh, law in the United States um, has a similar uh, principle, but there the age limit is um, set at 13. In the um, proposal of the Commission for the GDPR, the age was also 13. It is only in the very um, late stages of the um, 
legislative process that the age has been increased to 16 years of age. However, there is a possibility in the article um, to lower the age, so um, national legislators can take an active decision um, to lower the age, but it cannot be lower than 13. So they can decide that the age um, is 13, 14, 15, um, or 16. Um, so, and if um, uh, data is processed um, of children under this particular age, age that will be chosen, there is a need for parental um, consent. Um, what does this lead to, or what is, oh, it's not totally um, correct, the image, but what does this lead to, or what is, uh, what is, uh, what can it lead to in the implementation? There will be a separation in the um, broader cate category of children. Children are usually defined as under 18. That is also the case in the UNCRC. Um, in this implementation of the GDPR, you will have a group of children under this age that is chosen, or if it's not chosen, it will be standard 16. And then we will have a group of children between that age, between 13 and 18, between 14 and 18, and, and so on. There are many questions that um, arise with regard to the implementation. Um, of course, the first question is, well, now the standard age is 16. Should national legislators um, consider to lower this age to 30? Of course, um, industry uh, will be very um, much lobbying for this um, because uh, the age uh, is 13 in, uh, in the US. Um, but I think if a choice is made, it needs to be based on something. It needs to be based on evidence, on how children use online services, on their understanding <laughs> of data collection practices. Um, so not just a decision uh, within um, uh, a government to take an age without any, um, without any basis. Um, of course, it will be a big challenge for the DPAs to, um, to enforce um, these, um, these provisions. Uh, it will probably be an even bigger challenge for um, the companies, the data controllers, if they choose to um, imp um, implement parental consent, because another possibility is um, that they simply decide to exclude children under the age um, of um, parental consent. And that is um, the greatest risk for the rights, of particip rights to participation of children that they will simply be excluded from services that are currently very important to them. So it will um, possibly have a negative effect on their freedom of expression, freedom of association, um, education rights, um, literacy rights. So that is an, um, a, 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 real, um, a real question that we need to think about um, together and that we need to start um, a dialogue on. Parental consent in itself is a problematic concept because you will not always be able to rely on parents. In certain situations, uh, parents uh, will not be there, will not understand, and so it will put, or it will have the possibility to put children at a disadvantage if this is the only option. And then, of course, we have the second category of children. So the uh, suppose that a, a government decides, well, we lower it to 13, you have this group of 13 to 18 year olds. They are supposedly put on the same level as adults, but is this fair? Shouldn't we consider that for this group, especially for very privacy intrusive um, practices, data collection practices, there sh should also be extra safeguards um, for this group of um, data subjects. So I think um, my main message is that there are many important decisions ahead um, with regard to this issue. Decisions for national legislators, decisions for DPAs uh, on, for instance, guidance um, that they could issue um, in this respect. Um, uh, decisions by data controllers on how they will um, deal with um, this Article um, 8, but also other articles that have an impact on children. And I think also that um, children deserve an evidence-based approach. So these decisions that will be made, um, uh, I think it would be 
it, it, it is really necessary that we take advantage of the evidence that we already have at the moment. Um, of course, a lot of research still has to be done, but we do have already um, a, a good body of research on how children use online services, on how many under 13 year olds, for instance, actually do have Facebook accounts or other accounts on other social media. Um, on to what extent they actually understand data collection practices, although I think perhaps if you do the same research with adults, the understanding would also not be um, very great. And of course, also um, very important uh, insights into technology. These technologies, for instance, that will verify uh, parental consent, uh, are they effective? Can they be circ circumvented? Also from that um, area, um, input will be um, necessary. So um, I would like um, uh, to have this issue a little bit higher on the policy agenda. The GDPR is a huge piece of legislation. Uh, there is a lot to do for DPAs, um, for instance, uh, and this issue always gets a little bit to the bottom of the priority list, and I uh, do think it deserves um, uh, more attention. Thank you.